So this is a hammer mill. This is an old piece. The, the guts of it are an old piece of a farm equipment. Mike Lindell built a pillow empire from this machine. And also this one. We made this machine. Um, um, it, okay, it kind of looks like it. <laughs> He's a self-made success who also used to be a crack addict. And for a while, he was both at the same time. So you started my pillow while you were still an addict. Right, people say that all the time. They say that's one of the biggest miracles ever. A made in America miracle, which landed him at the White House. Do you want to start, Michael? I seen my name tag and I said, who's sitting here? And they said, well, the president. Like, I'm going, well, really? You know? Can you flip the heads, Sue, flip the heads around in the wall. Mike Lindell runs My Pillow in Chaska, Minnesota, the town he grew up in, a place where he launched one half-baked business idea after another, cleaning carpets, raising pigs, running lunch wagons, and occasionally making money as a professional card counter. They came around the table and picked me up and literally threw me through the front door. <laughs> like, uh... In the 80s, Lindell got into the bar business. Probably wasn't real good because I was an addict at the time, pretty hardcore cocaine addict but he continued to function. Mike Lindell had always had a hard time sleeping and never liked any pillow he bought. Then in 2004, he dreamed of a pillow which would hold its shape. I mean, I got up in the middle of the night, it was about two in the morning, and I had my pillow wrote everywhere in the kitchen and all over the house. And my, my daughter, one of my daughters at the time, she came upstairs, she goes, she looked around, she goes, well, what are you doing, Dad? I said, I've got this idea for the, this pillow. It's gonna be called my pillow. What do you think about it? And, uh, you know, and she's, she looks at me, she goes, that's really random. And she went back downstairs. Lindell spent months cutting up pieces of foam with his son, Darren, to create a pillow which would hold its form, even learning to sew it himself. I went down to the, a local, it was a bed, bath, and beyond, and, and I went, went in there first. I said, I have the best pillow in the world. How many would you like? And they're going, okay, I mean, you need to leave. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you know. And my, my brother-in-law's brother, he said, uh, well, Mike, why don't, you, uh, why don't you do a kiosk? I said, well, what's a kiosk and how do you spell that? Borrowing money from his ex-bookie, Lindell set up a mall kiosk and one of his customers turned out to run a large home show. He invited my pillow to debut at the show and sales took off. And then I, I got into crack cocaine. It's a different drug. Lindell lost his marriage, his house, and almost his business. One night in 2008, after being up for more than two weeks straight on crack, Lindell's dealer put the word out on the street that no one should sell him drugs until he slept. So I snuck off and, and uh, down and uh, uh, down hit the streets and it was about 3, 3, 3, 3, 3.30 in the morning. And I'm not kidding, I could not, nobody. And I'm going, I have $100 for $5 worth. And these are addicts on the street. These are, you know, and then I'm going, okay, how could they get the word out? How do they know, you know, notice me? I'm trying to hide my mustache and everything. <laughs> okay, you know, you know, and I get back to the to the apartment and he's sitting there and he goes, and he's sitting there, he goes, how'd that work out for you? And I said, and I'm just all upset. And he goes, give me your phone. He said, uh, and uh, he says, I wanna, I'm gonna take a picture. You're gonna need this for your book. This is the picture his dealer took that night in March, 2008, but that wasn't the end of it. When did you hit bottom? Well, it was January 16, 2009. I had one prayer that night. I said, you know, God, I want to wake up in the morning and never have the desire again for this. And because I knew he had a big platform for me. I woke up the next day and you got to realize this is years of crack addiction. I look, I, even, I go, wow, something's different. It was the most peaceful feeling I've ever had. Never had a dream about it. I've never looked back as it was just gone. In 2011, Lindell says he had another dream, make an infomercial. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. I've invented the world's most comfortable pillow. It was a hit, but even this was a strange success. Lindell did not like reading from a teleprompter, so he ad-libbed the whole thing. You can turn this any way you want. You can make little balloon animals okay. out if you want. <laughs> By the end of the year, we went from five employees to 500. Now this is the guy that tore the foam on the deck. Hi, Hi. Darren. <laughs> Those employees include his children. But for every two steps forward, there's always been one step back. After annual sales went from $100,000 to nearly $300 million in a dozen years, California authorities started accusing the company of making unsubstantiated health claims. The BBB revoked its A-plus rating because Lindell was running specials year-round. 
he blames a lot of this on politics. Were you punished for supporting Donald Trump? Absolutely. And we will stand up for our companies, our factories, and our workers. Is that okay with you, Michael? Good. Mike Lindell met Donald Trump in 2016 and quickly became a fan. All the jobs he wanted to bring back, and by the time I got out of there, I go, this guy's going to be the most amazing president in history. Still, Lindell had to lay off some employees last spring and change his advertising, but he says business is back on track. He's publishing an autobiography and hopes to turn his story into a movie with the help of his friend, actor Stephen Baldwin. He's also focusing on his foundation to help the less fortunate, expanding his product line, and even some of his former friends who used crack now work at my pillow. See, I look back now and I go, the only way that we were able to do that was, was divine intervention. And so people that have been on crack going, you know, you don't hear any successful crack addicts. And I have so many friends that are on crack, that were on crack at the time, and they've all quit now too, followed me. So it can be done, people, you know. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.